Welcome back to Turning Rose Mount Upside Down and hello if you're new to the channel. This video is all about the concrete pour, basically filling our ICF blocks, our eco bricks blocks. We'll run through the preparation work that we did prior to the pour. So you can already see the shuttering that we've put in place, covering our cut blocks, shoring up the corners and more, more importantly shoring up our angled wall blocks. So as you can see that we've expanded foam to quite a few gaps on the eco bricks. Eco bricks recommend that anything larger than a little finger needs to be filled to stop the concrete leaking out. Ellie thoroughly enjoyed this job and as ever went above and beyond So as you can see from the trestles and the scaffold boards, Ellie and I had already come up with a direction of pour of where we were going to go. And here we have, I've already put the chock blocks ready to the window frames for securing down the window sills once we've filled them up. Here we have Pumpmaster arriving bang on eight o'clock as planned. Pumpmaster were very helpful and they came out a week before to make sure that we could fit the 32 meter pump on site. Pumpmaster was actually the company that we used when it came to pouring our insulated raft foundation. When I was speaking to the driver and operator then, a chap called Craig, he showed an awful lot of knowledge in pumping ICFs. So when it came to booking the pump for our ICF pour, we were actually quite cheeky and requested Craig um, to come again to carry out this work. Once he got on site, it was then just making sure that where he'd positioned himself, he could actually reach every aspect of our build. Snocked us up a hopper to help with his aim when pouring the concrete. So this is the very first section of our pour and Craig recommended to us that we actually do it in two levels which we'd also been advised by Eco Bricks. Though I shan't lie, I'd nearly filled this section to the top straight away. I didn't quite anticipate how quickly the blocks would fill up. As you may have heard in our previous video regarding the driveway, my only experience in ordering concrete went wrong and I ordered the wrong slump. So I made sure I spoke to EcoBricks prior to ordering our concrete. Just so you know, this is an S4 C35 mix and I've requested that it has a minimal slump of 190. Now, if you're in the world of concrete, that will speak volumes to you. But for a novice like myself, I was making sure I got it word perfect when I ordered it. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll just go. Because no, of the edges, you can hold it down. Yeah. Nice and steady. Right, we'll just wait until it's nice and steady. Have a get this down. Yeah, yeah I'll get that get down. down. That's one. I'd managed to rope in my team from work to help leapfrog us with all the trestles and the scaffold boards so we always had a platform to stand on. Once we had filled the blocks to the top, Jim and our friend Lee hoke that section and scraped the top of the blocks with a trowel. first load done it then gave us time to place rebar uprights now this isn't a requirement at all this is 20 mil rebar that was left over from our reinforced slab so having spare rebar on site and knowing that we can't sell it and get our money back we might as well put it to some use and put it within the blocks to help tie in the next lift of blocks This is a part filled section and as you can see our hopper really helped to minimise the mess.
Series Dad and Lee in action using our golf ball stakes to poker the concrete to make sure it was going in every void. Now, being a little bit like Goldilocks, Craig said our mix was just right. There's more cons to it being wetter than if it's slightly stiffer. Ellie and I could actually see from sort of like a bird's eye view when we were pumping it down into the bricks, you could see it pouring out the horizontal cutout. So you knew you were getting like a linear flow of concrete and you really were filling the voids. This is slow down footage of how we were firing the concrete into the blocks. Annoyingly, by the time me and Chris had got into a good little rhythm, the pour was done. The concrete pour was relatively drama free, but unfortunately for Craig, the clean up process wasn't, and this is his cleaning hose bursting on him. So this is the morning after a day that was not just a massive milestone for both Ellie and I, but actually a huge learning experience. We've never done anything like this previously, so it was really good to get this first pour under our belts. To summarise our first pour day, I give reference to the seven Ps, which is proper planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. And I say that because Ellie and I did really put an awful lot of time into the shuttering and we probably went overboard as we've ever done with pretty much every aspect of this build. The blocks did have a slight wobble on areas like the kink and the stair walls, but the proper shuttering completely stopped this movement or this wobble becoming an issue. Our next video will be an in-depth look where we'll remove the shuttering and see how well our cut blocks have fared, especially on the kink section and around our sway frame steels. To finish, we'd just like to say a special thank you to Pumpmaster, particularly Craig, who was so patient and just brilliant on the day. And to all our friends and family who, without their support, we couldn't be doing what we're doing and somebody who's not very often seen on camera, but she kept us well fed and watered on the day, Chris's mum. Thank you.